Okay, so welcome to this uh, course. Thank you all for, for coming. I know that you have a choice of lectures. I know that for most of you this is an elective, so thank you very much for selecting this elective. Uh, this is a course on cyber physical uh, fundamentals, and my name is Peter Marvidel, and I'm obviously with the Technische Universität or TU Dortmund, and I'm with the computer science department there. I'd like to make sure that uh, all of you will uh, stay throughout the course until the very end and hopefully also pass the finals. So therefore, I'd like to make sure that you're motivated enough to stay until the end of the course. It doesn't mean that the course will be very difficult, but nevertheless, I think it's, it's a good idea to make sure that, that you're motivated. So how can I motivate you to um, attend all the lectures of, of this course? Well, I would like to motivate you by referring to forecasts. According to many forecasts, the future of information technology uh, is characterized by an integration of information processing into enclosing products, such as uh, cars, such as planes, trains. We also see information processing going on in robotics, in factory automation. And that means we are going to see an integration of information processing uh, into a kind of uh, physical environment or also some other types of enclosing systems. This trend has led to the introduction of a certain number of, uh, I would say, buzzwords uh, that uh, have been cited very frequently in, in different uh, types of media. So, for example, people have talked about the disappearing computer. This doesn't mean that there will be no computers anymore, it just means that these computers will not be visible. Also, people talked about ubiquitous computing, which more precisely should be called ubiquitous information. That means people are expecting any information to be available everywhere. Wherever pe people go, they would like that information to be available. Uh, also, uh, another buzzword is the term pervasive computing. Pervasive computing refers to the fact that computing will affect our day-to-day -day life, and I think most of you have seen this already. We have seen the impact uh, of uh, electronic media, even on politics. We have seen an influence on uh, the, the governments in certain countries as a result uh, from uh, the uh, pervasive computing. Also, uh, having computing available around us means that our environment becomes in one way or the other smart. This might be, for example, a help to handicapped people. This might be a help to, to elderly people. So in this way, we are trying to achieve a ambient intelligence. That means intelligence will be around us. We are also expecting that in the future, uh, there will be less and less emphasis on PCs, and PCs will not be the dominating devices anymore. And therefore, people talk about the post-PC era. That doesn't mean that we will not have any PCs in the future. It just means that there are many other devices, like smartphones, like uh, um, uh, computers and robots, etc. Very recently, another term has been introduced. This is the term cyber-physical systems. This uh, more recent term stresses the fact that information processing is more and more integrated into physical environments like the cars and, and the trains, and also in the case of robots, it's pretty obvious that we have an integration of inter information processing into the physical environment. From my point of view, there are two basic technologies that are needed for making this transition happen. One technology is embedded system technology, and the other technology is communication technologies. Now, communication technologies would be a subject by itself, and I'm not going into communication technologies. That would be a separate course. In my course, I'm talking about uh, embedded, system embedded system technologies as they are needed for the design of cyber physical systems. Now, in order to extend your motivation and in order to really make sure that you uh, stay throughout the course, I'm also referring to a National Research Council report that was published in the US, which is entitled Embedded Everywhere. 
According to that report, information technology is on the verge of another revolution. Network systems of embedded computers have the potential to change radically the way people interact with their environment by linking together a range of devices and sensors that will allow information to be collected, shared, and processed in unprecedented ways. The use of these small computers throughout society could well dwarf previous milestones in the information revolution. So that means if we uh, will take into account the changes that we are expecting, uh, we will uh, possibly get the impression that the changes that happened so far with respect to office automation, for example, will look rather small. Of course, uh, this uh, uh, citation is referring to small devices, so this citation is a little stronger relating to small devices such as smartphones, such as devices that are uh, communicating via base stations, uh, but uh, this uh, uh, citation is also referring to sensors and uh, to actuators, which are not shown on this slide. Uh, so the emphasis on this slide is a little more towards uh, the smaller devices and sometimes there is a question, well, are these smaller devices also within the scope of this course? Uh, the flavor on the two sides, the flavor of the examples on these two slides is a little different. In this case, we are referring uh, to information processing that really is integrated into the physical environment. Whereas on this slide, we are more referring to small devices such as mobile phones where the interface to the physical environment is not that evident. And it's a little bit a matter of taste to what extent we are also including these devices. We will include them in general because many of the techniques that we are needing for cyber physical systems also apply uh, for devices such as smartphones. For example, in both cases, we have to care about the energy consumption. Now, using this citation, we can try uh, to uh, anticipate the future. So we can try to predict what the future will be like. So in a sense, we are trying to look into the glass ball and to, to think what would the future be like for computing. Well, we can try to phrase the future in a very provocative way. We can try to phrase our impression of the future in an easy to remember uh, way, and this is the way in which uh, we could do it. Uh, we could say the future is embedded, embedded is the future. So we believe that in the future we are going to see many embedded devices and that it's really useful to look at embedded systems. Now this obviously means that uh, embedded systems are very important and uh, since uh, much of our course will deal with embedded systems, it makes a lot of sense to try to define the term embedded system. Now what's actually an embedded system? Well obviously there is this word bad in the term, so we might be talking about bads. But since I'm from the computer science department, uh, we will obviously talk about computers. So maybe we will be talking about combinations of computers and bads. So maybe this could be an embedded system. Or maybe this could be considered an embedded system as well. Or maybe this could be considered an embedded system as well. Well, these may all be embedded systems, but the slide, frankly, has been designed to get your attention. These are not the types of embedded systems that I will be talking about. So what will I be talking about then? Well, we can try to define the terms embedded systems, and it's also important to define the term cyber physical system. For embedded systems, there is one definition which I uh, used in the first edition of my textbook. According to that uh, definition, embedded systems are information processing systems that are embedded into a larger product. So we are referring to a situation like the one that we see in the car where we have information processing in an enclosing product. More recently, Edward Lee of uh, UC Berkeley uh, wrote the following. He said, uh, embedded software is software integrated with physical processes. The technical problem is managing time and concurrency in computational systems. So obviously, there is more emphasis on the link to physics and on the link to time, and I think that's a very uh, important uh, uh, strengthening of uh, the link to these terms. 
Strictly speaking, this definition is just a definition of embedded software, but you can easily turn this into a definition of embedded systems by just uh, uh, exchanging the word software by the term system, and then you would come up with a definition of embedded uh, uh, systems. Now, more recently, Edward Lee uh, strengthened the link to physics even further by introducing a new term, and this is the new term cyber physical systems. Uh, Edward defines uh, cyber physical systems as integrations of computation with physical processes. Now, some people are confused. Is this actually something new? Is this uh, the same as embedded systems? Is this something completely different? And from my point of view, a working uh, distinction between these two terms is the one that you see down here. We could argue that a cyber physical system is the entire system comprising the embedded system, which is the information processing part, and the physical environment. So that is a working distinction between the terms. So uh, we can petition the cyber physical uh, systems into the embedded system part and the physical environment. Now I'd like to strengthen your motivation even further by trying to convince you that uh, this ubiquitous information technology uh, this ubiquitous computing uh, technology is really based on embedded systems and communication technology. So on one hand, we have uh, all uh, the basic techniques that you find uh, for the construction of embedded systems. That means we need to talk about dependability, we need to talk about real time, we need to talk about AD converters, sensors, actuators, uh, feature extraction and recognition, possibly control uh, systems and robotics. And on the other hand, there is communication technology where we are using various kinds of networking. Uh, we might consider distributed applications and we have different uh, communication protocols and different communication media that we are using uh, for uh, uh, this uh, communication. And quality of service is, of course, very important. So that means for designing these very nice uh, ubiquitous computing systems that uh, most of you will be using in the form of smartphones, uh, we need uh, fundamental technologies from these two areas. I'd like to strengthen your motivation even further by also looking at the economic aspect of cyber physical and embedded systems. There are many statistics according to which you have huge growth rates and huge market shares for these types of systems. So for example, it has been computed that about half of the Americans by now own smartphones. And that is a very steep rise from the situation that you had two or three years ago. That means there has been a growth rate for these types of products by uh, uh, two uh, uh, digit uh, percentages. Also, there are other areas that are more linked to the physical environment. These smartphones are less so linked to the physical environment. Uh, remote health monitoring is really linked to the physical environment. And there, there was a prediction according to which uh, the total volume for, for sales in that area was expected to triple between the year 2006 and the year 2011. Again, this is a growth rate where many other industrial sectors would be jealous of. Due to the large economic impact, uh, this area was also funded by the seventh European framework. There have been many European projects in this context, and hopefully there will be also some funding in the eighth uh, European framework. Uh, due to the importance of this area for the industry, industry has uh, uh, created a joint uh, private-public partnership with uh, uh, the European Commission and uh, created the so-called Artemis joint undertaking. Uh, using this as a framework, industry tries uh, to have some pre-competitive -comp developments and some pre-competitive research uh, uh, projects that uh, aim at uh, providing some fundamental technologies for the design of these systems. The U.S. has also recognized that this area is very important and therefore there is currently a lot of emphasis on cyber-physical systems in the U.S. 
And the same is also true of other continents. We know that there is a huge effort, for example, by Taiwanese universities uh, to establish joint education there, and similar efforts exist in, in China and, and in Singapore. So again, we see that there is uh, really a good reason to look at uh, this technical area. Extending your motivation a little further, I would like to refer uh, to a citation which is already more than 10 years old. In 1995, journalist Mary Ryan wrote uh, that embedded chips form the backbone of the electronics-driven world in which we live. They are part of almost everything that runs on electricity. So almost everything that somehow uh, uses uh, electrical voltages and, and, and currents uh, is an embedded system. Uh, also, it's important to look at this area because embedded and cyber physical systems are the foundation for the post PC era. So, if you're looking at the post PC era, uh, you should actually stay in this course. Also, I think it's very important to stay in this course because cyber physical and embedded systems are hardly discussed in other courses. There are not that many courses in, in that area. I also think that these types of systems are very important for a technical university uh, because uh, uh, these are really technical systems. And also I think that these systems are important for many industries in Europe, uh, in Germany in particular, and also on other continents like in the US and uh, in Asia. Uh, so therefore I think you should actually uh, try to uh, uh, succeed in, in, in the finals. And finally, I'd like to mention that this course sets the context for specialized courses. So therefore, I think you should really stay until uh, the very end. So are there any questions at this time? So this concludes my attempt to provide you with enough motivation to stay in the course. <laughs>